Well, hello, ICA and Hong Kong. As I say, for me, Hong Kong is ICA, and ICA is Hong Kong. So it's, uh, it's a joy to be here with you. It's been, uh, been a few years. Uh, we all been in the same storm, but just different boats, all right? But it's good to be back with you all, and uh, everybody is looking good. I love the worship, and uh, we've had a great time with the leaders, and uh, our leaders, and uh, our church, uh, uh, Eagle Rock, and its uh, related ministries, uh, they send their love to you, and praying for you all, and, uh, and hopefully they said that they look forward to seeing you all someday, all right? And so maybe they'll get a chance to come and some of them come with me sometime. But it's, it's an honor to be here. We had a great time with the leaders. And of course, I always get enriched uh, with my fellowship uh, uh, with uh, Pastor Edmund. I was going up through one of his books up there in the waiting, uh, waiting area. And I said, I'm tempted to preach this book this morning, all right? And uh, it was really, really good stuff good stuff. So uh, it will be preached, but not this morning, all right? Anyways, uh, uh, somebody once asked me, said, uh, uh, when would you preach better? Uh, I said, when Pastor Edmund preaches better, because I preach all his stuff, all right? So anyways, uh, anyways, uh, it's a joy to be here. We thank God for you all. We're going to jump right on into the Word of God. I'm going to start uh, in Romans chapter 11, then, we, then I'll switch over to Isaiah chapter 1. Um, <clears throat> it's been, uh, again, a, a challenging few years for everybody, I think. Um, but I want to talk to you this morning about, the, I guess you would say, the, the miracle portion. The miracle portion. Uh, how many knows that uh, however you all get paid paychecks or whatever, uh, there is a miracle portion of that. Uh, that is the tithe. That is, you know, uh, those things. And which brings blessing upon the uh, other 90%. So there's a miracle portion uh, that uh, the, the Scripture talks about. And uh, I'm going to read a, read a verse here to you in Romans chapter 11, verse, uh, two verses, I think. Um, verse 4 and 5. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant. Everybody say remnant. remnant. A remnant according to the election of grace. Uh, versus doctrinally, I just do want to pull a, a principle out of that. Of course, the 7,000 hadn't bowed the knee. That was the encounter that, uh, that Elijah had uh, with God, and, and he was not in a, in a good place. And he said, Lord, I'm the only one out here really serving you. And he said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I've reserved for myself 7,000 that has not bowed the knee to the times, to the culture, uh, to the, the problems, uh, whatever it may be, they have not bowed the knee to that. And that is what we would call the remnant. The remnant is the miracle portion. Basically, the word remnant means a piece of the original that remains with us today. In other words, there is, God has always had a remnant. He's always had a remnant. Uh, the, the, when the dispensation of the church age began in Acts chapter 2 and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that began a great time, a lot of power, a lot of things happening, persecution, power, everything. The church is mushrooming and uh, angels are appearing. All kinds of things are happening. Uh, but then we get up to around 300 A.D. and it starts to cool down a little bit uh, uh, after uh, Constantine's uh, proclamation. Then we entered into a time what many uh, uh, call the Dark Ages. But even during that time, even during that time, uh, for, it lasted about a thousand years, a little over a thousand years, there was always still a remnant, a piece of the original that kept the fire burning, 
that kept the truths of the scripture, that kept serving God uh, when it seems they was in an ocean of paganism and, and uh, all of these different things. There was a remnant that was preserved. The, uh, one group was the Waldenses. They, uh, the spirit-filled expressions of Christianity was they, all through the dark ages and different ones. And then uh, uh, in the 1500s, the Reformation began to, uh, began to emerge. So God always has a remnant. And the remnant portion is the miracle portion. In Isaiah 6, he's talking about judging the nation. And, and he said, I'm going to cut it all down. And it's not a pretty prophecy. But he said, yet I'm going to leave a stump. And in that stump will be precious seed. In that stump, I'm going to begin again with that. So the remnant is, uh, it is a piece of the original that still remains with us today. Uh, the remnant is that which remains after loss. After you lose something, many times we, uh, the enemy wants us to focus on what we've lost, what we don't have, what we've never had. And, uh, and what God wants us to focus on is what remains. What do we have? What is left? Because what, what is left over after loss is the remnant portion. And it is the blessed portion. It is the portion that, uh, uh, that God will do supernatural things with if we just engage it. It seems, though, that uh, uh, that remnant portion doesn't come into view until after, uh, uh, after some loss. Uh, it seems to be the rhythm of life to possess the eternal things that God gives. Sometimes it seems like you've got you to possess them twice. To have, to lose, and to regain seems to be somewhat the rhythm of life. Joseph had the coat, the symbol of uh, 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 the coat of many colors, a symbol of authority, a blessing and favor, and had the dreams and the visions with it of what was going to be. But the Bible says in Genesis 37, 23, that his brothers, not liking that, stripped him of the coat of many colors. Sometimes God allows us to be stripped of good things when he's preparing us for greater things. So he suffered loss. And so you know the story. He was sold as a slave into Egypt and uh, went through years and uh, uh, then falsely accused and ended up in prison. He got, he got pretty low. Uh, but then uh, all of a sudden, just remember this. Uh, people can uh, uh, strip you of natural things, but they can't strip your gift. They can't take your anointing. They can't take the favor of God that is upon your life because that is something that you carry within they can take away the symbols of blessing, the symbols of authority, but they can't take away the mantle of it if that is what is God has given. And so, uh, you know the story, he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams and he got, uh, uh, one day he woke up a, a prisoner and went to bed a prime minister before the night was over and second in charge, only uh, uh, second to Pharaoh himself. So he got another coat. He lost one, but he regained another coat. And that coat was a symbol, another symbol of, of authority. So to have, to lose, and to regain seems to be the rhythm of life. Moses, of course, we know that he was raised up to be a deliverer and the, uh, for the children of Israel. Acts chapter 7 said that when he was a full 40 years of age, it came into his heart how God through him would deliver the children of Israel. Now he had education. He had authority. He had influence. He was raised in Pharaoh's house, being groomed, no doubt, to maybe be the, the, the next Pharaoh, possibly. And he had all of these different things. But then he had the revelation of, of uh, he's supposed to save the Hebrew people. Well, he tried to see a, an Egyptian persecuting a, a Hebrew, so he killed the Egyptian. And uh, he tried to do God's thing in his way. And uh, it didn't work out, so he had to flee for his life. And so he spent another 40 years on the backside of the desert. He's getting older, and the Scripture says that once he was mighty in words, but by the time he got to the end of his desert period, uh, the Scripture says that he stuttered with his words. He couldn't speak well. And it was at that time that God 
reset him or re reminded him of his calling. He had the burning bush experience. And I want you to deliver my, uh, deliver my people. Lord, how am I going to do that? <laughs> you know, we should have done that 40 years ago when I had the influence and I had the authority. But he said, I don't have none of that now. He said, what's in your hand? A staff. You know the story? Throw it down, pick it up. He's teaching a lesson there. And so with, the, with a shepherd's staff, he had lost a lot, but what remained was a shepherd's staff. And the shepherd's staff became the supernatural portion. He couldn't speak well. He said, okay, I'm going to give you Aaron to talk for you. All right, all you got to do is be there, take the, take the remnant uh, portion of what you got, and with that, God delivered the children of Israel. The same thing for you and for me. They're trying to feed the 5,000 one time. And he said, Lord, let's send them away. You've, well, we've preached really long, and uh, they got to get something to eat. Uh, he said, you feed them. And he said, oh, it's, it's impossible. No way that we have enough resources uh, uh, to, to feed and to take care of this. He said, what do you have? So they went looking and had a boy, had five loaves and two fish. He said, that's it, Lord. He said, that's enough. Give it to me. He blessed it. He broke it and gave it. And as he gave it, it multiplied. In other words, it was the remnant portion of food that fed everybody. I want you to know it is the remnant portion. What is left over? What remains after, uh, uh, after loss? And so many times uh, things don't work out in our lives and we, we go through challenges and go through changes and so on and so forth. But it's important to keep in mind that there is a supernatural portion to our life. In other words, many times we think, I don't have access, I don't have the open doors, I don't have the opportunity, and, uh, and, uh, and the victory that we have, everything that you need in your life is already in your life in seed form. There is a remnant portion. You may not feel like that you have enough, but just know this, there is a supernatural portion that you have with you, and from that, God will do some unbelievable things. The remnant the remnant. It is the miracle portion that God gives. Uh, years ago, I was uh, in the former Soviet Union preaching and went to this uh, one particular uh, town. It was uh, the end of a two-week trip. And uh, so that night, there was probably, I don't know, uh, 1,500, a couple thousand people. That night, probably three, three or 400 people got born again. It was a powerful night. And so there was talking and telling about the story of that ministry there, that, that church, uh, after service, and how they had a great problem, a uh, great problem. They had a great, they had a, 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 I don't know if you all have church splits in Asia, but uh, we're well acquainted with them in America, all right? <laughs> so anyways, it's split, and, uh, and, he, and, and the overseer says, I was going to close the church because we got reduced down he said, in that meeting, all we had was seven babushkas. A babushka is, uh, is a grandmother, but a real old grandmother. <laughs> all right, a very old grandmother. Seven babushkas. And he said, when I came, he said, that was the only ones that came to the meeting. And he said, oh, Lord, have my efforts brought me to this? And so he was trying to close it down, but they would not let him. The book. The grandma said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. We, we prayed too long for this. To... And he said, oh, gosh. And he said, I just didn't have it in my heart to force the closure. He said, he said okay, I'll give you six months, but I'm going, not going to let this kill you all as well. And from, from that, those seven babushkas, that remnant portion, guess what? I come along two years later, and they're running around 1,500 people. And that night, hundreds of people got born again. The miracle portion, what is left over after loss? What remains? What remains that is the miracle portion? How many believes that God is a good God? He's a God of resources. He's a God of faithfulness. He's a God that does what man cannot do. Think about this. After the three, after the three years of miracle ministry uh, to the cross, gets resurrected and uh, spends that post-resurrection ministry 40 days uh, uh, on, on, on the earth. They've seen him. They've seen him get crucified. They've seen him in his resurrected form. 
to 500, he said, I want you to go tarry in Jerusalem till you endue with power from on high. And then lift it up into a cloud right in front of at least 500 people there. Uh, well, 10 days later, what happened is this. You had 120 people that were in unity with God. Therefore, they found themselves together in the same room. Always remember this. Seek more to be in unity with God than with man. Because sometimes we can unify with the wrong things. All right? So uh, the best unity is unity with God first and then uh, uh, unity together uh, built on God. So uh, here it is. After all the miracle ministry, they seen the resurrection. It shook down to 120. But from that 120, that was the miracle portion. And God said, I'll begin with that. And from that, here we are today. So I just want you to know, it's for, not just for a church, but it is for your own personal life. It is for your own life. Uh, God will, he's a God of restoration. He's a God of uh, healing. He's a God that gives us new grace for new beginnings on a new day in a new season. And I always have this, no matter how bad a day has been, uh, I thought, well, this is not my only day. Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> if you're in a hard season, guess what? It's not your only season. It is not your last season. God has another season. There is a remnant portion. There is something that you have right where you're at with what you've got right now. And with that remnant portion, all it takes is to give that to God. There were some places that that was going in, in, in the continent of Africa and and uh, actually was just there uh, 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 last year. And, and uh, so I always make sure that I would take offerings. And uh, at this particular tribe, guess what? They had, they had nothing to give. There, there wasn't no money. <laughs> there wasn't no money. But I still took an offering. And, and I tell them this. Bring your favorite spoon, your favorite bowl, something. Whatever that is really important to you, bring it. Now, what am I going to do with that? Nothing. But the goal is this. It is for them to take their remnant portion and give it to God so that blessing can start to be released towards their life. And literally, listen, that, that particular group, particular group, this is not a prosperity message, but it seems like these kind of illustrations are, are, are coming out. Uh, that's where they started. That's where they started. I, it, it had been some years I went back uh, just last year, November, December. And, and there's a particular area there that this Maasai uh, guy and, uh, uh, in this village, he lived in a cow dung hut is where, is where he lived. But this time I went and had, uh, had a meal with him uh, in his house in the middle of the bush, nowhere. And I've seen all this kind of construction happen. What happened was this. Uh, uh, he did have some land. There was nothing on it. Uh, but this guy had given his heart to the Lord and, and was just really kind of all out for the Lord. And there was a word of prophecy that was given by the bishop in, 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 that, uh, uh, in another territory, but in the same nation. And he declared and asked for God to cause this land to benefit its owners. He sat on it for two years. And he thought, well, how's it going to benefit? And it just come to him. I think I'm just going to, he took a, some kind of a, 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 a tool and dug it into the dirt, and the first thing he hit was gold. I was there. I could show you the video clips. They have a gold mine. I seen where they, where they dig it out. They crush the rock. Uh, they break the rock. They take it. They was handing me pieces. They, they were all full of gold. And taking them to the crusher, crusher, then cleaning it, and then taking them to the fire, and... <laughs> And, 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 and purifying it from nothing. But there was a miracle portion. That has changed. Uh, uh, that has brought a, a, a whole uh, group of villages and, and that part of a tribe out of pro poverty through the remnant portion. Say, I got a remnant portion. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like this. You have to take the remnant portion and give it to God. It is the thing that will cause blessing to turn around. 
Isaiah chapter 1, this is how important that the remnant is. Uh, turn to two or three people and tell them, there's a remnant. You got a remnant of something, all right? You have a remnant of something. Isaiah chapter 1, God is dealing with uh, Israel. He's correcting them, so on and so forth. But he brings up an interesting point. He said, yeah, I'm disciplining you, but I'm not going to totally destroy. Uh, but he brings up an important point here. Uh, this is how powerful the remnant is. If there was no remnant, if we lost all the remnant, a piece of the original that still remains with us today, uh, we, would all, we would all be doomed. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant. A remnant is small. Say very small. Unless the Lord had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been made like Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah got completely destroyed, right? Right? The connection between remnant and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. What was the problem? Uh, why did they get totally destroyed? There was no remnant. They had no remnant. Remember Abraham, he began to intercede. He said, Lord, you're going to destroy all of it? If there's 50 righteous, will you not destroy it? He said, if there's 50, I won't do it. 40? <laughs> if there's 40, I won't do it. 30? If there's just 30, I won't do it. I won't destroy it. And then he really got a bold faith, and he said, what about 10? <laughs> he said, if there's 10 righteous, I will not destroy it. All there has to be, but he stopped there. <laughs> All there has to be is just a small portion. And from that portion, guess what? That's the remnant portion that God will use. You may not have... Uh, open doors naturally, uh, naturally, but you got an open heaven supernaturally. There is something that you have. There is something that you have. I remember I was in a room full of, this was in my uh, early years, and everybody in there was 10 times farther ahead of me and this and that, and I was the youngest guy in the room, and they said, saying, boy, they said, I, we just, where's the young leaders? There's just no young leaders around. I wish we had, they had some, uh, you know, some anointed young leaders. I'm saying, hello. Here I am, and uh, I, I didn't have money. I didn't have, I didn't have a nice car. I didn't have nice clothes. I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have, I have nothing. It, and it really hurt me that day. But the Lord said, "Calm down. Just relax. Calm down. They don't know what I've put in you, but me and you know what I've put in you. You got a Bible. You can talk to me. Start with that." And from that remnant portion, I engaged the things of God. I just want to encourage you. I tell people this. I say, listen, just jump in someplace and you will evolve to your place. In other words, people in the, joining the church, wanting to, well, you know, where do I? I say, just jump in and serve. You jump in someplace and you will evolve to your place. God will make sure that that happens. There is a remnant portion for you. And for me, we have a portion that is blessed by God. There is a portion. The, one of the most difficult things to lose, I guess you would say this. How many has ever prayed the Lord, grow me? I want to grow. I want more organization to grow, right? I, I want, I want uh, uh, the ministry to grow, my company to grow, whatever. Well, growth equals change. Change equals loss. Loss equals pain. That's why they call it growing pains. So sometimes you have to lose before you can receive. You have to give up before you can go up. The Bible says this in Psalms 118. It's a Messianic prophecy, but the principle uh, I want to pull out is this. The stone that the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone. Listen, sometimes there is the hardest loss, I think, is relationships, uh, close relationships. And I always hate when that happens. It's, 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 uh, 
Uh, th that's difficult. But sometimes there is a prophetic rejection because God sees into the future uh, in a way that we do not see. And sometimes God allows you to be rejected for your protection and your promotion. The stone the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone. In the earlier years of ministry, there was groups and different things. And I just really wanted to be around, and it's just like, I just like it was held at a distance. And I thought, Lord, what is that? <laughs> you know, and I'd look, I'd look, I thought, man, I, I don't smell, I, you, you know. I, but I was just, I, it was a lot of rejection. I just never could get in with that, with, uh, with that particular group. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'm just going to keep going forward. Uh, but now, oh, my goodness. It was not rejection, it was protection. Yeah, if I would have hooked up with that group, that would have set me back 25 years. Yeah, because there was stuff in them that God didn't want in me for your protection and sometimes for your promotion. Listen, sometimes when you feel the pain of rejection, ask yourself this, ask God, God, is this rejection or is this deliverance? Because sometimes it's hard to go the right way in life with the wrong people in your life. And I've found this. If you keep yourself to God's priorities for you, people that are wrong for your life will find you unbearable to be around. I'm not talking, that I reject you, out of God's will. No, I'm not saying that you do that. You create problems you don't need. All right? You leave, that in, you leave that in God's hands. But don't try to hold on to what God may be pruning out of your life. It doesn't always mean that they're bad, but it, doesn't mean, it may mean that they're not right for you in a particular season. And so sometimes people will exit your life because uh, those that are more for your life are entering your life at another season, at another time. So I want to encourage you, you have a remnant portion. And there is remnant people that God will put around your life. You can begin again with what you've got. With what you've got. You can start right where you are at. With what you've got and you engage it. And you engage God and you give it to God and say, God, I'm going for it with everything that I have. Listen, pray again, believe again, get up again, prophesy again, trust God again, go for it again. There is new beginnings is different than starting over. The thought of starting over is a dread uh, in, in my mind. Who wants to start over? Especially me, where, where I'm at, my, yeah, starting over, no, I, I ain't got enough time to do all that. But there's new beginnings, new grace on new beginnings right now where you're at. You have what it takes, and you give what, it, you give what you got, that remnant portion, you give it to God of your energy, of your time, of your treasure, whatever it may be, you give it to God and engage and begin to serve again, begin to worship again, begin to pray again, begin to uh, uh, love people, begin to, begin to do the things of God. And, and, and as we get activated in that, God gets active uh, uh, in the realm of the Spirit and things get set in motion. One thing is for certain, if you sow, you will reap. You don't sow and reap, you sow wait and reap. You sow water and reap. You sow weed out and reap. So I just do want to encourage you, listen, everything that you need in your life and for the rest of your life is already in your life in seed form. You do have a remnant portion. You have a voice, you have, a, uh, 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 you have the name of Jesus, uh, you're a child of God, Guess what? You have access. You can, you, can, you, can, you can go into. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, says, he said, uh, there is an open door for me, and there are many adversaries. Many times we look at the adversaries versus the open door. They're next to every promise, there's a giant. I understand. That, that, that's just the way it is. But go through the door. Go through. Listen, favor will open the door, but faith has to walk through it. 
And I encourage you, guess what? You have what it takes. Begin again. Trust God again. If you feel stuck in life, you feel uh, plateaued in life, or, or stalemate, the Bible said the anointing will break the yoke. The yoke, uh, uh, in Isaiah 10, the, the Hebrew word means st- stalemate, deadlock. I'm not losing, but I'm not winning, but I'm stuck. And the anointing will break stalemate because God gives you an anointing to move forward, and he wants to do some incredible and powerful things. Amen? Amen. Stand with me if you would, please. There is a refreshing in the presence of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is a grace, an anointing that will enable you to get moving again. Just take what, yeah, but I've lost it. Yep. What remains? Because what remains after loss, what's left over after everything is gone, that's your remnant portion right there. It may not be the portion you would choose, but it's the portion. And I just encourage you, take that, your energy, your prayer, your time, uh, you take that portion. Uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, somebody don't have a job, but they got time. <laughs> you can take time to, to give to God. Maybe, the, maybe the, we all have something uh, that's a portion that we can give that God will do some great things. I'm going to pray over you. And listen, if you're here today, listen, there is new grace for new beginnings. This is a season that God's giving people new beginnings and new grace is coming. A new freshness is coming. He is relighting the fire. He is restarting things. God is doing some incredible and powerful things. And I want to encourage you. Listen, don't miss, don't miss the opportunity. There's a spark. You, you don't have to have a forest fire, just a spark. Trust me. If you breathe in air, there's still a spark on the inside. There is a portion. There is the the babushka anointing. (laughs) There is the the remnant portion that is there that is blessed. And you just give that to God and watch him multiply it and watch him increase it. Now, Father, I pray over these in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them. I'm asking God that let today, let new grace for new beginnings come today. I ask God let there be an anointing that will, that will uh, enable people to be uh, shifted from where they are to where you're taking them uh, uh, in life. I'm asking God in the name of Jesus, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit break deadlock, break stalemate, break the stuck places in the name of Jesus Christ. Now on the count of three, I don't want you to hesitate. I don't want you to wait. I want you to show God that you mean this, and we're going to pray for you here in the altar on the count of three. Uh, There's an anointing to go forward, new grace for new beginnings. Uh, I I want to ask you on the count of three, step out of your seat and come on down if that is you. Ready? One, two, three. There you go. Just come on down. There you go. Just come right on down. If you're here today and you don't know Christ is Lord and Savior, I want you to know that today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. All you have to do is just let some of these uh, folks know, yeah, I I need Christ in my life. I need to come back to God or I need to to be forgiven. And we're going to believe and trust that God's power is going to come into contact with your need and something powerful is going to happen. Amen. Thank you.